Hey, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another tutorial from the Tower Defense Engine series. Last tutorial, we discussed the Map Region class and got that finished for Part 1. Part 2 still needs to be done on pretty much most of what we've done in the past videos. But we need to wait for most of the other classes to be finished before we continue. We're mostly waiting for the map class, and that's going to take a little while to do. So, anyway, this tutorial, we're going to cover the command info bar part one, where we just create the properties and the uh, method headers. And we're going to cover part two after we get the session going and the map, the main map class going. So just like, just like always, add the two using statements above, and let's go ahead with the properties. Just like the last few tutorials, we need to have a public rectangle, because the command info bar has a set size that we set up when we call the user interface. Get and private set. Okay, so command info bar is going to be the complex, the most complex user interface element. It's where most of our buttons are going to be, all of our UI blocks will be there, and what we will interact with most, besides the map. So we have a few UI blocks we need to add, and we'll be using the UI block class we created. The first UI block we're going to add is when we click the tower, it'll give us a purchase a tower UI block that'll give us a tower information and a button that says buy tower. That's going to be a dedicated UI block. So public UI block purchase tower get private set. Now when we're actually in the game for a little while, we'll have several towers in the main map region, the main map display. When we click one of those towers in the main map window, a new UI block will appear on the right side that will give us sell a tower, or cancel the selection, or upgrade the tower. That's going to be a dedicated UI block called selected tower. It's going to be get and private set. Okay, so at the very top of the of the uh, command info bar, you get you have x amount of money and x y amount of towers placed. So that's going to be another dedicated UI block. It'll just give us money and place towers information. It's a pretty small UI block, but it is going to be a UI block. So, public UI block, money and towers. Get and private set. Okay, the last UI block is going to be at the very bottom of the command info bar, where we can pause, increase speed, decrease speed, see we're on wave 2 of 8, or see our overall health. And we're going to call that public UI block stats and controls get and private set. Feel free to add more UI blocks if you want to. Remember, most whenever you have purchased a tower open, the selected tower UI block is not available. So all these are not visible at the same time. We will bring in the selected tower UI block if we select a tower, and we will not display the purchase tower, so some of these will not be displayed with others and stuff like that. Alright, so again, anytime we get need to have access to what we towers place or what the map is, we do that by having the session object in our class. Get and private set. All right, so that's it for the properties. Now a few fields that we need to have and what we need to do, 
field, what we need the fields for is mostly cleanup and spacing issues and our current wave index and stuff like that. And of course the command info bar will have a background when you go into Photoshop and you create your, or whatever graphics editor, and you create your visual for your map. You put a texture on the far right side for the command info bar. So we'll have that, and then we'll have the sprite font because we'll display, you have money, wave, x of y. That's all using a sprite font. And then we have a local reference to the tower we have clicked. So all that stuff will be in properties. So first, the first couple are integer values. So integer padding, comma, wave index. Now padding is going to be used for spacing issues. We want to pad or we want to give some gap and for the UI blocks. Texture 2D background. Sprite font. Sprite font. Tower clicked tower. All right, that's it for both the properties and the fields, so let's go ahead and create the method headers. First thing up is the constructor, and we have public, command info bar, opening parentheses, session, s, comma, rectangle r, comma, graphics device, gd. Opening close and curly brackets, and there we go. We'll fill that in on part two. Now for an event, void session underscore session throws the event. So I like to say session underscore money increased. Opening and closing parentheses, opening and closing curly brackets. Now what this method will do whenever we, whenever we kill an enemy, we gain money. Whenever that money increases, we need to tell the command info bar to increase the money display. Remember that's in the command info bar. It'll give us, you have X amount of money and Y towers placed at the very top right. So we need to let the command info bar, hey, our money increased. So increase the amount of money in your display property. So that's why we create a we sign up to that event because we need to update it. Same thing with this one, void s underscore health decreased. Opening closing parentheses and opening closing curly brackets. So whenever our health gets, whenever a monster goes to our house, castle, whatever you called it in your map, Whenever a monster reaches the end, our health will decrease. Now the command info bar tells us lives left or health, 20, 19, whatever. When you decrease it, the command info bar needs to decrease it as well. So it displays the correct information. Just like the money increased. Void session underscore tower Purchased. Opening closing parentheses, opening closing curly brackets. Whenever we purchase a tower, we need to increase the placed tower integer by one, and we need to decrease our money display. Public. Void. Initialize. Opening parentheses, sprite font. Sprite font, closing parentheses, opening closing curly brackets, and that's it for that method. Void. Clickable tower, underscore left, click event, opening closing parentheses, opening closing curly brackets. Now, we need to sign up for the left click event so we can display the selected tower UI block. This will trigger the change in the UI blocks. Private void
initialize money and towers. This will initialize the UI blocks, and we'll do that for all the UI blocks. We'll have an initialize method for each one of those. Private void initialize purchase tower, open and close in parentheses, and open and close in curly brackets. We will initialize the purchase tower UI block there. Void. Select tower underscore left click. Open and close in parentheses, open and close in curly brackets. This will be a left click event that we will handle when we select a tower and and it will initialize the selected tower UI block in this. It'll call the initialize selected tower UI block. Which, speaking of that, let's go ahead and do that right now. Private void initialize selected tower. Opening parentheses, and this accepts a tower T object. Closing parentheses, opening and closing curly brackets. Now some of these will accept parameters as well, but we'll get to those later. Okay, now a few things we need to add. There will be methods to, whenever we want to add a button to a UI block, that will be handled by a separate, fun separate method. So private private void add sell button whenever we want to sell the tower we need to add a sell button integer y the current place in the y axis on where to place this button all right private int add upgrade button opening closing opening parentheses and y closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets and in the method body for now return zero private void add purchase button opening parentheses int y closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets all right some more left click events that we need to add void cell tower underscore left click opening and closing parentheses opening and closing curly brackets void upgrade tower underscore left click opening and closing parentheses opening and closing curly brackets void by tower underscore left click opening closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets void cancel button underscore left click opening closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets So you saw those in the past. We have sell, upgrade, and purchase. Sell, upgrade, and purchase, which is buy tower. Now the cancel button you have not seen. That'll just cancel this act of selection. Okay, so now private void initialize stats and controls opening closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets now the buttons for the actual controls pause increase speed decrease speed and launch next wave so void pause underscore left click opening closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets void increase speed Underscore left click opening closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets 
void decrease speed underscore left click opening open and closing parentheses open and closing curly brackets void next wave underscore left click open and closing parentheses open and closing curly brackets okay whoo that's a lot of stuff to add for this class uh, just keep in mind the next part two it's probably going to be a part three and part four tutorial series for just this command infobar class this is one of the biggest user interface objects that we have we will create for this engine it's going to be a pretty big class so we might have a four part series for the command info bar. Okay, so now what on to what you have seen in the past, just like the last class, we need to have a way to reset our tower references. Internal void reset tower references, opening closing parentheses and opening and closing curly brackets. And now for the most familiar methods you probably know are public void update game time game time closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets and public void draw opening parentheses game time game time sprite batch sprite batch and then a sprite font closing parentheses opening closing curly brackets all right go ahead and save this class and that was part one of the command info bar a lot of stuff to add for this class but anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Next tutorial, we're going to work on the session class. And then finally, the last tutorial for the week, we are going to cover the map class. The main map class, the one we've been waiting for before we finished part two of the rest of the classes. So those are the last two tutorials for the week. And then hopefully... 1.1 will be released this weekend as well. So I hope to see you next time and thanks for watching. I hope these tutorials are beneficial. We're almost there for the most interesting parts. Uh, just stay with me for a couple more tutorials so we can get things organized and then we should be ready to go on part two. So I hope to see you next time for the session class.